Woodwork grabbing the right far. The rebound finds Twine, and that could be all for Real Salt Lake. And for New Mexico United, it certainly is real. The cup set is real. Real Salt Lake, member of the MLS, falls to USL Championship. New Mexico United by a final score of 4-2. Our guest tonight on Football Americas is Peter Trevisani. He's the president, CEO, and majority owner of New Mexico United. As you just saw there, they're into the round of 16 of the U.S. Open Cup after beating RSL last week. Peter, great to have you on the show. Welcome and congratulations. And look at that. Herc even got dressed up for you. That's what I do. Hey, hey, hey. Great, great to be here. What a moment uh, in the history of New Mexico. And uh, you're looking sharp. I mean, that's as good as it gets uh, right there. You're not the first one to say that, Peter, but thank you. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> that, that's not this year's kid, is it, right? That's an old kid. We got to get Herc updated. Yeah, is that we right, gotta Peter? we got to get a new kid. This is an old one, but it's it's one that I think is very nice, and I brought it out. I, I thought it was uh, appropriate. It's our current kid. It's in our third season, and uh, we love that kid. We've, uh, we'll have we probably be uh, coming up with something you know, more creative down the road. But for now, it's it's getting it done. It's a great kid and really brings together art and sport, which is part of what we're doing, not just playing soccer games. I like that. We're not switching kits every year. You find something that works, you stick with it. There we go. Something different in American soccer. Uh, look, Peter, we got a lot to talk about. The uh, the Open Cup run, uh, based, you know, what's happening down there in USL Championship. Anyway, you guys beyond the Open Cup have had a lot of success uh, in the league and in the Open Cup over the years. But I got to be honest with folks, why you're on this show is because six days ago, you tweeted something that really <laughs> caught my eye. I know production's uh, got to look at it here. For those that can see the image, you can see what Peter quote tweeted. But Peter, what jumped out to me was actually what you wrote, which is owners of USL teams were asked not to comment on the MLS stance on Open Cup. I got to be honest with you, uh, the folks here at Football Americas, we were pretty spitting mad about MLS stance on the Open Cup. And so if there's somebody out there telling important people in American soccer not to talk about it, my first question is, who and why? So who was it? <laughs> yeah, look, uh, they say don't tweet in an emotional state or X or Twitch, whatever it's <laughs> called these days. But uh, look, uh, uh, you know, going back, when MLS originally said they were pulling out all their first teams. Uh, that was a very emotional time. And I give our uh, president, Paul McDonough, a lot of credit at the USL. He had to go sit down with Don Garber and US Soccer and really uh, try to uh, bring um, this tournament back to what it should be, which is the ability for all teams to compete and the ability for uh, the best team to be named uh, you know, the champion in America uh, based on merit, not based on salary or uh, or money. And so really during that time, and I agree with Paul, he asked the owners not to comment while he was negotiating with Don and, and U.S. soccer. And, and so it was kind of going more back to that. So they're not actually saying don't speak about it. Um, and uh, but that's where that that piece came from. And even even with the preference that we don't say too much about it. I think we have to speak up about it. This is a very big deal. And if we don't speak up about it, we can't com you know, be surprised when the results don't go uh, the, the way that we want them to. Peter, as an investor in American soccer, USL, and abroad, you're an investor in Venezia and the Serie A. Does it seem like an insult to you that Major League Soccer doesn't even want to participate in the US Open Cup? I think it's short-sighted. I think it's a scarcity mindset and not an abundance mindset. Uh, you know, as we all know, the most popular leagues to watch in America are not MLS or USL. They're Liga MX or European soccer. And if we want U.S. soccer, U.S. football, to really take its rightful place within the world's game, uh, we need to build a bigger pie and not be fighting our own. And one of the ways to do that is to create more awareness inside all communities in America, not just the 30 teams that cities that have teams in the MLS, but create awareness and excitement and show what the beautiful game is really all about. And so I think so early uh, in the game, we need to really be thinking about ways to promote the game more and bring it forward uh, and not uh, have MLS just have its own slice and leave everybody else um, in, in a different bucket. Peter, we got a lot of people that uh, don't watch the show, but listen on the podcast. So maybe they didn't see the image that was quote tweeted there, but basically one of your fans in the stadium had a, a an image of a Monopoly figurine with the name Garber on it. It's a pretty obvious reference to Don Garber, who's not just the commissioner of MLS, but he's also on the board of directors um, at U.S. Soccer. 
I wonder what you feel like the actual impact of not having MLS teams in this tournament has been. Because one thing I will say is it got a lot of people interested in the Open Cup. And I feel like, especially in the early rounds this year, there was a lot more buzz around it than in, in years past. I'm not saying that to forgive MLS pulling out, but I do think, and, and maybe you disagree with me, that there is a little bit more focus on the Open Cup right now. Oh, I'm so fired up for this year's Open Cup, uh, more so than ever. And I've always been a big fan of Open Cup uh, because of what it represents, which, you know, when, when we put New Mexico United forward, a lot of, uh, of people in, in Albuquerque and New Mexico didn't know what the USL was. They didn't know, you know, even what U.S. soccer, how it all worked. And we talked about this Open Cup tournament, which crowns the best team in America. And the champion of Open Cup gets to go to CONCACAF. And the champion of CONCACAF gets to go to the Club World Cup where you're playing Real Madrid or some other team for a chance to say that you're the best team in America. So this little team in New Mexico actually has a platform to be the best team in the world. And that's the true meritocracy of, of football. And that's uh, what we need to be promoting in America. And so I think what MLS has done is created a lot of awareness uh, on the Open Cup, which really did uh, need a, uh, you know, a kick in the you know what to get going. Uh, but it also brought a lot of awareness to these second division and third division teams that have amazing teams and amazing products. And, uh, and so I think it's created a lot of awareness. And, and uh, in that case, it's been a really great thing. Uh, Peter, this little team from New Mexico bounced the current First place team in the West of Major League Soccer, mm -hmm. Ralph Salt Lake, dropped four on them. <laughs> Talk to me about experience, hey, that go. experience. <laughs> what was that like for you? <laughs> Must have felt good. Oh. oh, man, so good. So happy for our fans uh, who don't get a chance, an opportunity to see a professional team in, in New Mexico compete at the highest level. Just doesn't happen here. So happy for Coach Eric, head coach Eric Quill. Uh, you know, coach any team in America would be thrilled to have Coach Quill uh, leading them. And for our players, uh, so many of our players, frankly, uh, some you know should be playing in the MLS or could be playing in the MLS. And someone along where along the line were told uh, no, and it certainly wasn't based on their skill. And so you put all that together, and what it means is we have a gigantic chip on our shoulder when you get to play the best team in the West. Uh, and you come out with the effort that we came out with in a 4-2 victory, man, that just feels good. And, and that will be uh, in the history books forever and never to be forgotten. It's probably a surprise to a lot of people, but I think to folks that have been paying attention, maybe it wasn't that much of a surprise. What blew me away, um, Peter, was the crowd, which I think was just shy of 6,000. For some folks, man, they, that might not sound like a lot. I used to work for an MLS team. I know midweek, on short notice, selling 5,000 tickets anywhere is, is damn near a miracle. So that you got it for the Open Cup, I think, is awfully impressive. But um, you guys are doing a lot of cool stuff off the field with the Academy. I know you got a lot of scholarships there looking to break down the, the pay-to-play model. We've seen success in the Open Cup before. When I go around mm -hmm. America and we talk about best brands, USL, MLS, anything in the American soccer game, New Mexico United always comes up. Uh, what is it about awesome. what you guys are doing down there? <laughs> Well, I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm, I'm really fortunate to be the leader, but we have so many great people that work on it every day. It's, it's an amazing team. And frankly, almost none of us have a professional sports background, which I think is actually part of our success. You know, I think it just uh, came down to the fact that we uh, decided to, to put forth this authentic team. You know, when we were talking, the ownership group was talking about doing the Mexico United back in 20. 18, a lot of us came from finance and the spreadsheets didn't make sense. They they were screaming, no, not enough people, not a big enough income, not enough sponsors, um, a graveyard of professional teams that have come before us. Uh, so we just did what any reasonable person would do that wants to do something. We ignored the reasons to say no and we focused on the reasons to say yes. And we felt like we didn't need 2 million people to come out in New Mexico. We just needed... Uh, you know, tens of thousands of people to decide that this is important to them. And, and we did that by just creating a platform that welcomed everybody. Doesn't matter who you are, what your background is, what God you pray to, who you voted for, what your disagreements are for 90 minutes. You can agree that what you're seeing on the field is amazing, that that's your team, or that was the worst call that you've ever seen. And I think if we could build those connections between people that aren't normally connected, even just for 90 minutes, Maybe there's other areas that they can find commonality. And I think that's how you build community. That's how you build a stronger state. And that's how we build a stronger country.
Peter, let's uh, stay with the Open Cup. You're on a high of beating Real Salt Lake, a major league soccer team, but now have to go across the country to face a NYFC 2, which is MLS Next Pro. <laughs> That's the other side of that spectrum. Now the pressure's on you. Talk to me about this matchup and maybe uh, what you see going forward. This is amazing. The American, Le the American dream is alive and well. Right, we get to go across country. We're in the final 16 in America, the Sweet 16. And I've watched uh, New York City FC uh, play uh, both and beat two very good USL championships El pa teams, El Paso and Hartford. This is a young, hungry, dynamic team. They're not uh, aware enough to know that, you know, maybe they're punching above their weight and they are very, very dangerous. So we're going to go in there. Uh, you know, we could give this 100%, have our best effort, and still end up on the losing side. So we have to go in and, and give it our all. I know our, our players aren't taking it lightly at all. Our coaches aren't taking it lightly. Uh, there's nothing, you know, we're in the final 16. It's full throttle. And here's the beauty of it. Regardless of it turns out, obviously, we I want to win. We want New Mexico United to win. One of these two teams is going to be in the final eight. Uh, in, in this tournament. And that, that's just incredible, uh, uh, you know, TV. It's also, it's an incredible storyline and anyone that loves the underdog, this is the tournament for them. And these are the kind of things that you root for and, and attach yourself to. Peter, I got one last question for you. Cause you guys weren't the only USL team to advance, not beat, but advance past an MLS team, uh, in the last round. Of course, we saw Detroit city and penalties get past the defending open cup champions. Houston Dynamo. After that game, Peter, I don't know if you saw the comments from Houston head coach Ben Olsen. He was asked about, you know, the difference between first and second division. His exact quote was, you know, it's not even close. Uh, my thought is, well, it would be great if we could settle this on the field, which of course leads me to my question about promotion and relegation. I wonder what you think the value of promotion relegation would be either, you know, just within USL or maybe bigger picture, you know, the entire American soccer landscape. Yeah, you know, I think what Ben and, you know, what Coach Olson said there, you know, I think in the heat of the moment, um, you know, I, I, look, at the end of the day, he also said that that's the best Open Cup team he's put out at this stage in his career, and Houston has won it all. And so, I, you know, that is a real a, a testament to Detroit and, and the fact that, uh, yes, you know, look, if these teams play 100 times, you know, Houston is going to win more than 50%, but the gap isn't as insurmountable uh, as uh, coach uh, led it to believe. And frankly, uh, there's plenty of players on USL championship squads, including our own that could be playing in the MLS. And I think MLS should is really making a mistake. There's only one, a couple of MLS teams that really look for USL players. I'll give you a quick example and then get on to pro row Diego Luna, uh, who mm -hmm. played for El Paso and now has a Real Salt Lake Jersey and scored against us in the open cup. And I hope one day is a star on our U S national team. Uh, how does he go from being not even close to all of a sudden a up and rising star in the MLS by just changing jerseys? Uh, there, are, there are Diego Luna's all over the place, and if you, the MLS could get out of the hubris of feeling like uh, they they know best and they really were open. Another example, yeah. Yeah, I mean that kid is so talented. Also scored against us and did a <laughs> lot of damage in Charleston. Um, and there's others. They're, they're, it's not just two, and there's more coming. And there also we have kids going. To Europe, and we're finding more and more young players are skipping the MLS Academy system because they realize there's massive constraints to it, and they're coming direct to the USL Championship. Those are two examples that we just talked about, and now they have their options open to them, and they're finding that they control more of their own destiny. So I think that there's way more to come. It's just the very beginning. And in terms of promotion relegation, I think it's I think it's an amazing concept, and it's something we really need to lean into. I do believe personally that we're not quite there yet in terms of developing the leagues. Um, we still need to get more teams. We need to get a better footing. Um, and, you know, whether USL does it on its own, you know, I, you know, I didn't really want to understand what we're promoting to, but I, I feel that one day it's inevitable that we'll have a true promotion rele relegation system here. And when that happens, I think uh, we're excited to compete in it and try to get to the top. And if we're in fifth division, because we're not getting it done, then then we'll tip our cap and get to work and and uh, and work our way back up up the table. And uh, I would I would love to see it. And uh, but I do think we have a lot of you know infrastructure we have to put together at the team level before we're ready to to tackle that. But it's it's coming. All right, an owner that's not afraid of a little competition. Sign me up, Peter. Great to have you here on the show. <laughs> 
Um, good luck on Tuesday against New York City FC 2. I, I was pretty harsh on the MLS Next Pro team, so I'm going to be eating some crow if one of them is in the quarterfinals. So <laughs> at least one of the duo here on Football Americas is definitely in the New Mexico United camp next Tuesday. Good luck. It's the guy wearing the jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Vamos. Let's go. Let's get it. Thanks for everything you guys do, you guys do for the sport. Uh, love how you attack it. Keep it up. Um, we're growing it together and we're making a bigger pie and it's going to benefit everybody. Thanks for the opportunity. Hopefully I get to talk to you guys on the uh, other side of an open cup win.